Maybe I don't need the fourth buddy buddy poffin. Maybe I'm goaded. This deck is arcane. It gets into areas of math that mere mortals aren't meant to fathom. I'm... I... Oh my god. I think you just have to not try to get sucked down into the weird math. There's a lot of stuff where it's like, oh, I should have done it in this order. If only I had done it that way. Where hindsight is twenty twenty, around like whether or not you metal maker or concealed cards. There's probably a certain decision that's plus EV that regardless of the outcome, it's always correct to do it in a certain order. But like in that game, you know, it just felt bad because it's like, shit, if I would have metal makered and then concealed cards, I get the mute EX. You know what I mean? I've just been playing against a lot of Roaring Moon decks that are just really good at getting set up and hitting me super early. And I feel like versus a lot of other stuff, you have way more time to, to get established. Because I went for the Ultra Ball to pull Dialga V in case they had, you know, Prime Catcher or Boss with the Roaring Moon EX and stuff. And I just get completely clapped. Four Mulligans? What is going on? My opponent gets to start with plus four? Okay, what the hell is going on, chat? I'm absorbing... Somehow I'm absorbing all of the bad luck from every other Dialga player right now. I've somehow become the locus of bad luck. And I keep playing against this damn deck over and over again. I know it made top eight EUIC. Is it that good? Bruh. I might switch back to my future box. I don't know if I'm like favored here or not. This was probably the coolest, one of the coolest decks in top eight. Very unique for a Roaring Moon to Dunsparce to make it that far. If you draw non-energy cards from your deck with Greninja, you gain like a 1.6% to draw energy. But if you draw energy, you lose like 8% of the chance to get energy. Yeah. Yeah. And I can magnetic lift. Am I on, I have to I have to make sure I'm on four Arvin as well. I'm only on three Arvin. I've got a Matang and a Professor's Research. So next turn I want a second Matang on the top. And so in this scenario, assuming my opponent doesn't Iono. I get completely, like, eviscerated, evaporated, vaporized by Iona right here to rig a Matang on top. I do have Mew, I guess. And I still draw six. One of them is just guaranteed to be Matang. So actually, I think it's correct to magnetic lift and put the Matang on top. Yeah, that that's the thing. It's like, this is, this deck is arcane. It gets into areas of math that mere mortals aren't meant to fathom. There are, like, I wouldn't be surprised, like, if Ross Cawthon would, like, crunch some sort of weird algorithm on this thing. Prime Catcher? Why, though? That seems excessive. Wouldn't you wouldn't you want to knock out Mew there or try to? I don't know. So I've got Professor's Research, I've got an attach for turn. I've got restart. So we metal maker first. And we hit nothing. And then I metal maker again. And I hit nothing! No energy in this part of the deck either after the research. 
I can Prime Catcher to bring up their Radiant Greninja. I guess I could sneak in an Evo this turn. This has got to be like one of the most like nonsense plays I've ever made in my life, right? The good news. No valid cards. What? Oh, I don't have another Matang. My other one's in the prize cards. So I literally needed to discard the prime. Ca it doesn't matter. It gives me two Dialga V-Star in play. Oh, this is so cursed. Like, if I get enough Metal Energy, I can at least go for Metal Blast or something. Or use the Prime Catcher to bring up the Roaring Moon, right? I Star Kronos this, and then I can Prime Catcher to bring up the Roaring Moon. This is actually so insane. All right, I just got to promote the Dialga V-Star and just go for it. If you Ultra Ball the Matang, you could have Super Rotted it in. That's that's also true. That is very true. So we're just going to hit three energy here. Because we did Metal Maker, Metal Maker for nothing, and then Professor's Research, no energy either. So now our, our next two Metal Makers are guaranteed. Yeah, there we go. And then we star Kronos this thing. No, I super rotted to put the Beldum back in. And then I ultra balled for it. So I've got Prime Catcher to bring this up. It's got 290. 280. I need one more metal energy in order to bop this Roaring Moon. There we go. So now I'm going to put metal energy here and one there and one here. So now when I Prime Catcher, I bring this up. Matang goes into the active. And then I retreat the Matang back into Dialga V-Star. And I do have enough. And then I can super rod those energies back in the deck. Ooh, and Mew. I can nest ball for Mew and draw cards here. Before I draw, I should Metal Maker. Do I even want to put energy on the Mew? I don't think so. There's not really any attacks I want to copy except like Radiant Greninja's concealed cards to maybe knock out these Dunsparces, which is very, very cute. But there's always a chance they get the Dunsparces and then it doesn't work out for me. Yeah, so I think that I'm not going to try to be cheeky with a play like that. If my opponent had a worse setup, I think I could abuse the Dunsparces for sure. This is easier to track when you have physical cards. Yeah, this one of the few decks that becomes a little bit easier with a physical deck. Because you can have your energies like sorted out of your discard pile and more visually kind of just keep track of where everything is. So I have no energy in the discard pile. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 energy in play. So I only have three energy somewhere. And I think two of them are in the prizes we said. Unless I took them already. Excuse me. Dunsparce is a free retreater. They've got the Roaring Moon EX established. Yeah, 
Yeah, so they've got the frenzied gouging. I already used my lost vacuum, so I can't like use lost vacuum to knock this out. I do have a super rod. And a matang. And a counter catcher. So I can counter catcher to bring up the radiant greninja. And then I force my opponent to have a switching out for this. Versus, yeah, I knock out Roaring Moon. Actually, no, no, no. I can bring up the Radiant Greninja and then uh, knock out this Roaring Moon on the bench plus the Dunsparce. Yeah, I like that play. I like it a lot, actually. Very, I think we have very high odds, if I'm, if I'm being honest. I think this is my best play regardless. I can Nest Ball one card out of the deck. And then Super Rod. Three energy back in. I should have drawn cards with Restart and then Super Rod it, actually. So I uh, have two more cards that um, I could have seen where I didn't uh, mess with the math enough. Let's go. Concealed cards, baby. Moonlight Shuriken. Oh, wait. This is three prizes. Wait, I'm super dumb. Whew. So, again, I could have restarted to draw two cards there before I super rotted. So then there's two less cards in the deck and slightly better odds for the Mew. The ca Oh, my God. I'm... I, oh my god. Drawing first would have been bad, but you got there, so no worries. And I didn't draw. I thought that not drawing was bad because I want two more cards out of the deck, right? <sighs> Bruh. The Roaring Moon deck is so, so cursed. Hello, TT. You're hiding behind my uh, word bubble. You want to go first? No. I want to go second. I forgot to put in the fourth Buddy Poffin and the fourth Arvin. What do we cut for fourth Arvin and fourth Buddy Poffin? I think I cut a Vitality Band. I'm, I'm on two Vitality Band. I think I'll just cut one. Here it is again. The Vitality Band is really good so I can star Kronos a Roaring Moon EX if it doesn't have a capsule on it. So having two... Makes it really strong if one is prized. Yes, I will draw one more card. Oh, baby, let's go. Maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. I'll cut a Vitality Band for a fourth Buddy Poffin. Worst comes to worse, what? We magnetic lift research on top. All right, pretty chill turn for my opponent. Double Vitality Band. Ugh. Cringe. Oh, I'm gonna get ya. I'm gonna get ya. Yeah, we really, <laughs> we really got nothing going for us. Uh, so I'm just gonna magnetic lift a uh, professor's research on top. And I guess we can check the deck while we're here. Muse here, Radiant Greninja's here. My Dialgas and V Stars are here. Cypher Maniacs is kind of cool. Prime Catcher's there. Nine energy in the deck. That means that four. I have two in the hand. So it's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's two energy in the prize cards. I forgot to check my Super Rod count. The, and my lost vacuum. I didn't see if vacuum was in. I forgot. But if, if this vitality band was lost vacuum, right? Or the fourth buddy buddy poffin. We just have like another Beldum in play and we're cool. I don't know. Ooh, hang on. K. 
can we get there off of this research? I can retreat one more energy and they get to do uh, frenzied gouging. I can retreat and then like super rod, you know, two energy back in the deck to promote the Dialga V star. I've only got sh one metal maker. I'd have to hit like the strongest metal maker of all time. When I could just uh, magnetic lift again, but there's a chance that they just have attach boss. And I'm kind of cooked anyway. So I am going to extend. And I want everybody in chat right now to cover their eyes and not look at what I'm about to do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we just switched back into the Beldum. I, I bailed. I said, oh, I got the switch. Never mind. Rip. I guess I should have just magnetic lifted again, but I wanted to go for the gold. That's incredibly low odds. I'm such a silly billy. I just, I guess we just magnetic lift again for lost vacuum or like another Matang. Or Mew. I've got boss, so. Boss something up star Kronos feels a little bit better. I really do want Matang. Hmm. I guess magnetic lift for Iono is maybe best for me. Yeah, okay, yeah, they have Prime Catcher anyway. So if I had magnetic lifted to put like Iono on top, then I have some shots here. Yeah, so. Got my own prime catcher, but that doesn't really help me. Yeah, so if that was like an Iono. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this. Into magnetic lift. And then maybe try to set up some sort of nonsense play. I haven't seen a single one of these moon decks actually use the Dunsparce yet. The Dunsparce is just there as a pivot. Oh my goodness. The same thing happens to me, except I'm one turn ahead because I get to Iono last turn rather than my magnetic lift because they had the prime catcher for my Dialga V-Star yeah so this is stuck that's a good sign Artisan doesn't do anything for me so I'm just going to Iono alright so we got the Matang got Radiant Greninja Go for concealed cards. Counter catcher. Let's me bring up the Roaring Moon. There's Arvin. I can retreat the Beldum. I need Dialga V Star. And they don't have a Roaring Moon EX established. So with the counter catcher, I can uh, Star Kronos. Star Kronos is probably unlikely, but just hitting that is worth. Because I've got the attach for turn. Maybe I hit two of these.
Just gonna grab Diaga V Star. There, I would really like to grab Mew there, but I, it's just not, it's just not available for me. All things considered. And there's a world where I pre-commit, you know, and then I retreat and super rod. So there's a couple more energy left in the deck. Maybe I get my star Kronos that turn to take two and then three. But I think this is also fine. Because without a Roaring Moon EX established, I think that I'll be in a really good spot now. They can hit me with Vengeance Fletching, and then I just crack back with the Star Kronos. With Attach from Hand, Super Rod, very likely I get it. I could even go Concealed Cards and then Super Rod. Nest gets me Mew EX as well. So I can nest, attach, super rod, then Matang, Matang, draw three. And then I just need to hit one energy off of all of that. So I maybe it's concealed cards. Nest, Mew, attach, super rod, restart for three concealed cards, and they concede? What? Because they can't knock out the Dialga. They see it coming. Somehow we won that game. It was not looking like it was a valid game, but we got there. Because your Star Cronus is going to put you so far ahead, your opponent is scrambling to put together a big attack. And we saw that at EUIC. I was talking about it earlier, where Tord Reklev was just hitting stuff, just dealing preemptive damage and forcing the opponent to respond. Ooh, that's a sick Yokohama coin. You forgot again. <laughs> we don't complain about free wins. Amen. Welcome in, uh, Mad Wheels. Maybe I don't need the fourth buddy, Buddy Poffin. Maybe I'm goaded. Is there a way to refill your prizes in Pokemon? I feel like that's a mechanic they had a really long time ago. But I don't, I'm pretty sure that does not exist in the current format at all or at the last several formats at that there are cards that say when this is knocked out your opponent doesn't take a prize honestly mad wheels you should immediately build and play alessandro's pidgeot ex control deck that is one billion percent your deck it's a control deck that runs like seven or eight different win conditions and then you 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 have a card that lets you search out any specific of those annoying cards and win conditions to counter your opponent's deck so if you know your deck and you know your opponent's deck and you know the meta you just become nigh unstoppable your opponent has to be running completely harebrained nonsense in order to stand a chance and alessandro literally didn't make it to the finals of euic because he didn't use Ultra Ball to discard a Forest Seal Stone to weaken Bayonet EX. And Bayonet EX is like the only card that you're just not ever going to be playing around ever. Um, Nest Ball. I have TM Evolution. I have to Iono this turn. We Nest Ball for Dialga V. Attach the Vitality Band to it. Concealed cards. Got Beldum. The Lost Vacuum is going to be really nice. So, incredibly high chance this is... Oh, they've got Grass Energy. So, it's actually my build. Not necessarily my build, but it's a true Future Box. It's not just Hyper Hands. Now, Peak Acceleration only accelerates to future Pokemon. So, we don't have to worry about nonsense with the Mew EX. You can put, like, XP Share on it. You can use Energy Switch. Stuff like that. But it's hard. It's harder for Future Box to use Genome Hacking. And even with Quad Crown, 
they can't hit 130 on the Radiant Greninja. Wow, they're thinking about it. They're, they attach to the Mew. They're really thinking about it. I guess Electric Generator does get you there if they are on that version. There's like a hybrid build that still runs like the batons and the generators. Yeah, they're spreading the, the energy all around. They might be on On Guard's double switch version. version. Um, I can evolve... Arvin for Buddy Poffin and Evo. And just get set up. Oh my god. Punished, I guess. Just thin these out. Do I buddy pop him for another Beldum? This Radiant Greninja is going to go down, so my next slot is actually reserved for Dialga V-Star. I'll just save the buddy pop and it's like Ultra Ball fodder, I guess. And because my opponent didn't focus all of their energy with the Maraidon, it's a little bit more difficult for them to threaten me. But yeah, it's uh, Alessandro uh, Crimisoli. He made top four at EUIC. And he posted the deck on Twitter as well. His Twitter handle is iCatterpie. And so with Vitality Band, right, I can use Star Kronos to knock out the Iron Hands EX. And with Lost Vacuum, oh my god, if I get Prime Catcher. Hmm. Woo! Finally, we're getting some good makers. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not going to start Kronos this Maraidon, by the way. The curse has been lifted. We had to prove ourselves worthy. I was just being tested by the god of time. He said, hey, have the worst luck in games of your life. Fight tooth and nail for like these very, very nebulous victories. And then you can get to the, the promised land and enjoy the land of metal plenty. Ooh, bundle. Come get me. Hit me with a Bundaroo. All right, you can have a Beldum. Go on, amp you very much. Take your three prizes so I can cook you for both that Iron Hands. The longer you wait, the higher the chances I have Prime Catcher. I'm just going to lost vacuum this, this freaking thing. Oh, they're going to, okay. That's cheeky. They're just going to peak acceleration. Okay. <laughs> Tango, please be nice to me. There's Metagross. Very cute. I think I just hit this again. Got on to four prize cards remaining. And then I just threaten a four prize turn with Star Kronos and Metal Blast. 
they can't knock this out because this deals 160, 180, 200, 220, 240. Yeah, this doesn't. This hasn't been chipped, so they they can't one shot the the Dialga. So I'm just gonna metal maker. Get some more energy loaded up. It is a shame, because I guess there is a world where they can bring up this Dialga and, like, amp for three prizes. But because I go down to four, I still just snatch the game from under them, don't I? I could even Lost Vacuum this uh, Baton away right now. No, 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 I don't want to do that, because then they can um, attach a future booster instead to get extra damage. We get a follow from Walking Art. Thank you and welcome to the Nighthood Walking Art. They're trying to copy your V-Star attack with Mew. It could work if they have, like, attach triple energy switch. If they're on it like that, then so be it. If you have three energy switch, then you are the, the goaded king of all. Now, if Iron Hands EX gets knocked out, then they can pass the energy back to Mew. But that's why I run Maridon EX, the big future one in my deck, because it lets you hit these 280s when you need to. That ener that, that lightning energy was a manual attachment. Primid Catcher. Okay, yep, there it is. They do Prime Catcher, they amp for three prizes, and then I star Chronos and take all of their shit. Because I Chronos, because I have Vitality Band, my star Chronos knocks out the Iron Hands EX. And then then I destroy their entire existence. Cypher Maniacs is also kind of sick with uh, Star Chronos because you know your next top deck is going to be what you want. Oh, shit, they're going for the Iron Leaves. It's the same difference, right? Prism Edge only... Okay, it is boosted. Okay. Yeah, I, I just Star Chronos and win. They only have two prizers in play. 180, 200, 260. They need quad. You need quad Iron Crown for Iron Leaves to take a knockout. Yeah, so they they not, they can't promote anything after our Star Chronos in order to win. And again, that's so Metal Blast deals 250. Star Chronos deals 230. So again, that's the secret, by the way, chat. When you're playing this build, this build of Future Box, it's not just Iron Hands or Bust. You run the Future Maridon EX when you're playing into a matchup where your opponent has a 280 HP Pokemon. So you have something that you can set up and start building up and take those final prizes. And if I had gotten Prime Catcher, I would have just knocked out their Iron Hands. And I would have done this play way earlier. And there is a chance. There is a chance that they are running it and it was prized. Because I don't run heavy ball in mine. And I've gotten got like that before. <laughs> 